Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is a day that the Lord have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to you. We thank God for, for you all for joining in with us. And before I forget, I would like to wish all fathers happy Father's Day. This is a day set aside for, for you. But every day ought to be Father's Day. And we do thank God for you all. As we continue with our study, uh, today's study is indwelt by the Spirit of by the by the Spirit. The point is the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives affirms our relationship with God. Because of his presence, it makes sure that our relationship with God, it's a sure thing, affirms our relationship with God. And it's come to us from Romans chapter 8, Verses 9 through 17. Let's pray. Father, we come now in the name of your son, Jesus. We thank you, O God, for this day. We ask, O God, that you bless it, that you be glorified in it. And we thank you for this day that has been set aside for fathers. And we, we, we love you and we praise your name. We, we lift up those who are sick among us in hospitals, convalescent homes. We have sinners and those who are homebound. We also lift up Crystal and Renita's husband, brother. Uh, we lift up Miss Miss Cherry and Miss Miss Velma, Miss Miss Betsy, Miss Gilmore, Miss Miss Helen and Miss Shirley, and we we lift up Deborah and, and and her ailments. And Lord, we just thank you for all that we do. We pray, dear Lord, that you will bless our time together, that you may be glorified in all that is done. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. This morning, again, we are continuing our study on uh, our study is on never alone the Holy Spirit in our lives. So, so we, we are never alone when we said that before. Never ever alone because he promised never to to leave us. We have three outlines. The first of the three outlines we have come to us from Romans chapter eight, verses nine through eleven, and it reads, "You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you." If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Now, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life through his spirit who lives in you. The Holy Spirit indwells in us. To indwell something or somebody is to live within, to live within us. Therefore, the Holy Spirit lives within us. And because he lives within us, we ought to have the same character that Jesus and our Father had. We ought to have the same character. We ought to have the same DNA of, of, of the Father and the Son. And so, say so if, 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 however, you, however, are not in the flesh. Can no flesh inherit the kingdom of God? So we must be spirit. 
So, so the Spirit, so the Holy Spirit indwells us, and because He indwells us, He, he allows us to have the same Spirit of Christ. And because we have that same Spirit, we belong to Him. However, if we do not have the Spirit of Christ within us, then we do not belong to Him. And so now, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but, but the Spirit gives life because of righteousness, because of our righteousness, because of our right relationship with Jesus. We, we, we are of the Spirit, and the Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, is residing in us or indwelling us in our in our mortal body. So so it's important for us that the Holy Spirit indwells us. And because of the Holy Spirit indwelling us, then we must, we must have the same character as Jesus and the Father have. Here are some lasting truths. At the moment a person trusts Jesus, God in the person of the Holy Spirit indwells every believer. When you accept Jesus, that's when the Holy Spirit indwells you. Because the Holy Spirit gives life, eternal life isn't something that will happen in the future. Believers receive it at the moment of conversion. So it, it, it's, it's not an it. It happens immediately. And at the resurrection of the dead, the Holy Spirit will overpower the effects of death and give life to the mortal bodies of the believers. So, so it's important for us that as believers, we are to be indwelt by the Spirit of God. The, the second outline, Romans 12 through 14 says, so then brothers and sisters, we who are obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh, because if we live according to the flesh, you are going to die. But if by the spirit you put on, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live for all those led by God's spirit are God's son. Okay. The Holy Spirit leads us, leads every believer. He is who, who leads us. Now look, that word obligated is the same word as debtors in the New King James and the King James Version. And so, so, so because we are debtors, we are obligated, okay? But it says that we are not obligated to the flesh, okay? Because it says if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. The flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But if you live according to the spirit, it puts to death the deeds of the body. You will live for all those led by God's spirit are God's son. So the spirit leads us. And because the spirit leads us, we are God's sons and daughters. In other words, we are God's children. And so it's important for us not to live according to the flesh. Because if we live according to the flesh, we are going to die. But if we live according to the spirit, we are going to live, live for all those led by God's spirit are God's sons or God's children or God's sons and daughters. Whatever way you want to say that, it means that. So the spirit leads us into making right decisions. The spirit guides us and directs us. So he, he, he's, he, he's there for us. All we have to do is accept him. As I say, some, some, some lasting truths. Since Christians are led by the Spirit, they have no obligation to live according to the flesh. The Spirit will lead followers of Jesus 
to die to the flesh. Christians do not sanctify themselves alone. The Spirit gives them both the desire and ability to live by the Spirit. So, so, so the Spirit leads us and he guides us. The third outline, Romans 8, 15 through 17, it says, you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Instead, you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. If God's children also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The Holy Spirit affirms every believer as a child of God. So we, we, we should not be slaves to fear anymore. Why? Because we are God's children and God has not given us the spirit of fear. So, so we, we cannot be fearful. And he has adopted us into his family. And because of that, he has testified, the spirit testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. And because we are God's children, we are heirs of God, we are co-heirs of Christ. And because we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. So, so it's important for us. And the Holy Spirit affirms to us that every believer is a child of God. Every believer. Every believer is a child of God because of that. Remember, fear is not of God. And, and Fear makes slaves of us if we allow fear to control us. And because of that, because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, he has given that to us and he has adopted us into his family. Because he has adopted us into his family, we are heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. And, and so, indeed, we suffer with him so that we may be glorified with him. So all of that uh, affirms or, or testifies to the fact that because we are God's children, we are uh, joint heirs with him. And so it is so important for us to get that deeply down in us, some, some truths. Even though God is holy and exalted, he has adopted us through his spirit and desires intimacy with us. The spirit confirms that we are a child of God through the inspired word of God so no believer needs to worry that he or she hasn't, isn't born again. Suffering with and for Christ is inevitable, but so is being glorified with him. So, indwelt by the Spirit of God. We, we are indwelt by the Spirit. And because we are indwelt by the Spirit, He, he, uh, he indwells us. Because He indwells us, He, he also uh, leads us. And because He leads us, He also uh, affirms us. So, with that being said, uh, let, let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. May God richly, my beloved.